welcome to the news on Magic Bricks now, India's first property channel. I'm Amita Balchandra. Let's first take a look at the top headlines at this hour. Shapurji Palonji is all set to launch a separate brand to cater to its small homes business. Its first target is to build 20,000 small homes. That is the mega exclusive story breaking here only on Magic Bricks now. Listed real estate company Parshiv Nath will now have to pay a monthly penalty to buyers for delayed possession of its project. The order has been given by the National Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission or the NCDRC. The centre is all set to announce the list of the 20 cities that will be made smarter. The announcement could be made any time this week. We tell you how the cities are gearing up in a special offering War of the Cities. Straight up, it is one of Indian real estate's marquee names, builders of palaces and Mumbai's most recognised landmarks. The very same Shapuji Palunji will now enter into the business of affordable homes. As early as this week, the company could soon announce a new brand to cater to this segment. Disha Shah gets us exclusive details on Shapuji's small home plans. Take a look. The company, which is known for building Bombay Stock Exchange, which is also known as BSE, Reserve Bank of India, also known as RBI, and some other important landmarks in the city of Mumbai, is now going to make smaller homes. Here we are talking about Shapurji Palunji, which is launching a new brand under the affordable housing segment. Under the new brand, the company aims to build 20,000 homes over the course of eight years in top seven cities, mainly uh, Mumbai, Pune, NCR, Chennai, Kolkata, Bengaluru and Ahmedabad. Sources close to the development, they tell us that the first project under the affordable housing brand will be launched in Kolkata and the work for the same will be started uh, sometime next month. And the company has already started identifying land parcels in other cities like Mumbai, NCR and Pune. Uh, under the new brand, we will see homes being built uh, between 15 to 50 lakh rupee bracket and we can expect uh, announcements uh, from the company's end by, uh, sometime uh, by end of this week. This is what uh, companies officials uh, uh, have uh, they have uh, told us. Just to give you a quick background, it was just in July last year when the company announced partnering with three uh, players uh, Standard Chartered Private Equity, IFC and Asian Development Bank and they raised close to 1,250 crore rupees as an investment purpose for this uh, to build uh, the new brand and in this deal the company clearly stated that 70% of the investment will uh, be invested by the partners and 30% of the investment will be uh, invested by the company which is Shapurji Palunji. So clearly we have to wait and watch uh, as to what's uh, in store for the home buyers under the new brand. Moving on, Parsivnath developers will now have to pay a monthly penalty to home buyers for delaying possession in its project Parsivnath Planet. Now, the National Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission has ruled that the developer will have to pay 15,000 rupees per month to complainants who had applied for flats up to 175 square meters. Those who booked bigger flats will be paid 20,000 rupees per month. The buyers had booked flats in this Lucknow project in 2006 and had been promised promised possession by 2009 to 10. Now, to give us some more perspective on this, Nirav Jani, Senior Associate at Haryani and Company, joins us on the phone line. Thank you so much for joining us here on Magic Bricks Now, Nirav. First question to you, in view of Parsavna developers who have been told to pay 20,000 rupees per month penalty for delay in their projects. Now, do you feel in absence of the real estate bill, judiciary has come to rescue home buyers? It is a, a, a welcome decision uh, because it helps the home buyers and uh, and deals with their frustration and delay in projects. But having said that, uh, uh, each and every case should be taken in its own merits. So it should not be as an across the board kind of a decision. So each case will be dealt on its own merits as far as the delay and the compensation is to be paid. Uh, also, tell us, Nirav, has the decision of judiciary after Unitex case, uh, uh, courts have now adopted uh, stringent measures against builders. Do you think uh, also can this be counted as some justice to home buyers? 
as far as the judiciary is concerned, the judiciary always uh, used to come to the rescue for the home buyers all the time. Uh, it's just it's just that now uh, the home buyers have been a little bit more active and are are, are taking their uh, rights forward. And therefore, it's always a welcome decision uh, when the home buyers uh, get justice uh, uh, for the delays that the developers cause. All right. Also, some developers have now started being more cautious. In fact, some of them have now extended their delivery period. Do, do you think this will help in delivering projects in time in the future? For the acts which are within their control, um, I mean, they must deliver for that. I mean, uh, and there's, there's always provisions for force measure and the events which are not within their control. Hence, they must be very cautious in, in committing uh, the time within which they want to uh, within which they can deliver the project, and um, uh, it's it's uh, it's always uh, welcomed to see if developers are being cautious. All right, Nirav, thank you so much for joining us here on Magic Bricks. Now, meanwhile, HDFC Bank announced its earning today. Uh, the bank's profit increased 20% from last year, while the bank's loan book looked healthy. Retail loan growth outperformed. Wholesale loan growth. The company's home loan growth, however, remained flat. Also, there's some bad news coming in for home buyers because the company maintains that there won't be any substantial rate cut, at least in the near term. Listen in. Uh, retail loan growth was about 29%, while uh, wholesale loan growth was about 19. Point, uh, well, about 19% actually. As far as our own growth in the underlying business is concerned. Uh, as we add new uh, you know, locations, which uh, are, are within uh, you know, our, our own existing locations, these are the, not the new locations we are adding. And as we increase our penetration of existing customers, we've been growing our home loan book at a healthy pace. On a year-on-year on -year basis, of course, it's been about 40 odd percent. Uh, on a sequential basis, it's been flat. Unfortunately, at least at this point of time, it doesn't look like we've got a room for a substantial cut. But it goes back to the point that you rightly made, which is that uh, lending rate cuts will necessarily have to reflect what's happening on the deposit side. And uh, at this point of time, clearly in the last few weeks, you have seen that the system deficit uh, has been increasing. And if anything, the comfort of extra liquidity sloshing around has certainly disappeared. And so the hope or the expectation that deposit rates will come off and over a period of time, therefore, enable banks to drop their lending rates, I think that, if anything, in the last few weeks, has receded uh, relative to where it was uh, you know, a couple of months back. Moving on, in order to provide some relief for victims of the 5,600 crore rupee NSEL scam, five real estate properties owned by NSEL worth over 350 crore rupees will be auctioned to repay the victims. The Maharashtra Protection of Interest of Depositors Court has ordered the competent authority, along with the deputy collector, to begin the auction procedure. Now, the five properties to be auctioned include land plots in Ahmedabad, Hyderabad and Ludhiana. Nearly 13,000 investors lost their money in the scam and the case was first registered in 2013. Also in the news, French President Franco Holland and Prime Minister Narendra Modi took an eco-friendly metro ride in Gurgaon today to inaugurate the interim Secretariat of the International Solar Alliance. Now, the French President is in the country to attend the Republic Day celebrations. Both countries have agreed to deepen business, economic and defence ties. French companies will invest $10 billion in India across sectors ranging from solar power to railway manufacturing. Now, while the deal with fighter jet manufacturer Rafale is making headlines, what is also significant is that the French president has pledged annual funding of almost 1 million euros to make Indian cities smart. French funding will go into making Puducherry, Chandigarh and Nagpur smart cities. It's time now for our special series, War of the Cities. Now, the War of the Cities is hotting up and any day now, the list of the first 20 cities that will get smart will be announced. Magic Pricks now will get you a ringside seat into all the action. In the meanwhile, here's a teaser of what you could expect if your city were to make that cut. Magic Pricks now reporters have been tracking city corporations for months and have got special access to the pitch they made to the union government. First up, Suesha Savant, who's been tracking cities in North India, tells us what uh, their plans are. Take a look. 
That's right. Everybody is anxious to which names will make it to this list of 20. The suspense is building. Just to give you a roundup, um, NDMC had been selected for the Smart City Challenge. Amongst all issues, the ones with higher dominance include intelligent traffic management, waste reduction and recycling, public security, especially uh, security for women and health services. Moving to Ghaziabad, um, uh, they want to create more job opportunities and increase employment by facilitating business to promote uh, DMI to create better air quality by reducing greenhouse gas emissions and the city will also focus on pan development by installing traffic signal control system public redressal DLL red light and speed violation system uh, talking about Varanasi um, uh, for Varanasi's uh, smart city plans the key focus areas are uh, citizens uh, engagement online engagement and tourism area based development uh, is to focus on the area adjoining Ganga Ghat and the pan city proposal includes traffic mobility and solid waste management. Moving on to cities in Western India now, Disha Shah who tracks Western India gets us his details. Take a look. Ten cities have been selected in the Western zone of India and to make each city a smart one, all the ten cities have taken a dual approach. First, pan-based development and secondly, area-based development. Talking about area-based development and we talk about core markets, for example, like in case of Mumbai, BMC particularly plans to focus uh, in key areas like Lower Parel and Andheri, where it plans to make uh, Lower Parel as the next business central district and Andheri as the next IT hub. Apart from this, it also also provides it will also provide 24 by 7 water supply and Wi-Fi connection across the city moving on to Navi Mumbai which uh, the city which already boasts of a ready infrastructure is designed for the next gen is designing for the next generation of growth through smart city for example having wider concrete roads sufficient water resources and supply 100% of water waste being treated before disposal and an advanced solid waste management system to keep the entire city clean. Moving on to Pune, the, this city also has similar uh, plans like of Navi Mumbai, but uh, it is also incorporating more smarter features around energy, transport, water sewage, solid waste and also visible improvement in areas through underground wiring. And lastly, in case of Thane, for smarter transformation, the city plans to install CCTV cameras across the entire city and also in few locations for safety and security purposes. It's time now to move on to the south of India with over 25 cities nominated for the center's top 20 list. How does South India stack up in the top 20 race? Well, for one, over 12 cities have been nominated from Tamil Nadu, 7 from Karnataka, 3 from Andhra Pradesh, 2 from Telangana and 1 from Kerala. A very clear trend emerging here, only two states out of the lot have nominated their capitals, Tamil Nadu and Telangana. In fact, both Chennai and Hyderabad have a good chance of making it to that top 20 list. Now, key cities to watch out for in these states will be Chennai, Madurai, Trichy and Coimbatore, all four in Tamil Nadu, Mangalore and Hubli Darwad from Karnataka, Kochi from Kerala, both Hyderabad and Greater Warangal uh, stand a good chance to make it to that top 20 list. And Tirupati from Andhra is most likely to make it to that list. With that, it's time to move on to Eastern India. We have Arun Rangaswamy with more details on which Eastern cities are strong contenders. Take a look. As we move closer and closer to the Smart City announcement, the expectations of which are those chosen 20 cities are getting higher and higher. Uh, the thing that we have to note is that the cities which are which were nominated from the eastern side of the country are turning out to be a very, very strong contenders to make the cut for the Smart City list. The interesting thing that should be noted is that the Union Urban Development Ministry had actually selected six cities uh, from the six uh, states of the eastern side, that those are the capital cities of those states, and uh, which include Assam's Gohati, Meghalaya's Shillong's, Nagaland's Kohima, Tripura's Agartala, Mizoram's Aizawl, and Manipur's Impal. Some of the con uh, strong contenders that uh, has to be mentioned are Pasigat of Arunachal Pradesh, which according to the Smart City uh, mission statement, wants to emerge as a well-managed, clean and green and environment-friendly city. Uh, with the character of its own and also Chhattisgarh's Bilaspur which wants to be the cultural capital of the state should get a mention too. Uh, with names like Raipur, Boneshwar, Durgapur and Newtown Kolkata on the race too, it certainly is a war of the cities.
All right, that's what cities across the country are doing to make it to the top 20 list on Magic Pricks. Now, we'll keep a close watch and tell you which cities finally make that cut. Let's now take a look at some other stories that made headlines today. The government is considering higher payments to farmers for land acquisition. Godrich Properties is set to venture into the Noida market. And Santik gives Kotak Realty Fund an exit of nearly 300 crore rupees. Let's take a look at these stories in brief. Godrej Properties is set to build its first project in Noida. This will also be the company's sixth project in the national capital region. The real estate major has tied up with NCR-based Lotus Greens to build a housing project on a 36-acre land parcel in sector 150 of Noida. The plot being used is a part of a 300-acre sports township that Lotus Greens had acquired in 2014. The proposed project will have around 4 million square feet of saleable area. Kotak Realty Fund has exited from Suntech Realty's Mumbai project with a return of nearly 22%. The fund had invested 150 crore rupees in 2012 in the Mumbai-based luxury property developer's Goregaon project and earned over 270 crore rupees at exit. Spread over 23 acres, Suntech City is a mixed-use project. The exit took place in multiple tranches funded by Suntech's income as well as surplus cash flows. Suntech City offers both residential and commercial spaces along with retail and entertainment component. The government is mulling higher payment to farmers who gave up their land for highway projects, announced Road Transport and Highways Minister Nitin Gadkari. He said that higher compensation will be paid under the new land acquisition law. Farmers will also be compensated if they are yet to receive compensation under the old legislation. This move will help roll out projects worth crores of rupees. Over 2,000 cases are currently stuck. This decision will also be applicable to farmers whose awards were fixed prior to January 1, 2015, but physical possession of land acquired hasn't been taken. NHAI has also resumed work on the Eastern Peripheral Expressway that was held due to land acquisition problems on Palwal side after the release of enhanced compensation. Now, if you're planning to buy a home soon, then you better brush up on some basic real estate terms. Not only will that save you a lot of future heartburn, using the lingo will also impress the sales staff. Uh, they will know they can't mess with you. Take a look. Let's get started then. The first three words you need to know are IOD, CC and OC. Alphabet soup, let me break it down. These are the basic government permissions you need to make sure your builder has before buying the house. IOD stands for Intimation of Disapproval or Authorization. It sounds negative, but is essentially the first permit that the developer gets to start building. It means the building layout has been approved. However, the builder still needs to get about 40 NOCs or No Objection Certificates from various departments. Once these are in place, the developer gets what is called the CC or Commencement Certificate. This is the final clearance to start building. However, the CC is given in two stages, up to the plinth level and then another one beyond plinth level. So while booking, check if the floor that you plan to buy a flat on has received the CC. If it has not received the CC, then that floor has not been approved by the government for construction. In other words, unless the CC comes in at a later date, the house would be illegal. And for all those who want to buy ready property, you must check for this last permission, the OC or the Occupancy Certificate. Once the developer gets this document, he can legally give you possession of the house. Also, if you buy a house that has got an OC, you do not need to pay service tax on it. However, this is not all. After receiving the OC, the developer needs to submit a formal letter stating that the building has been made according to the standards set forth in the IOD and CC. On doing so, the company receives the completion certificate. Getting this document means that the building can now connect to public utilities like electricity, water and gas. So there you have it, the big four permissions that mean your home is legal and approved. Let me run you through them again. First comes the IOD or Intimation of Disapproval, then the CC or Commencement Certificate which is given in two phases, then is the OC or the Occupancy Certificate that allows the developer to give possession. And finally, the completion certificate which you need to connect into civic power, gas and water supply. Moving on, if you like arts and crafts and love to make cool props for your home, 
then you will love this trick. Design it yourself, Akash Perry is back with a new trick on how to make interesting props for your home using empty egg cartons. Take a look. We'll be using the bigger size egg trays. Cut off strips like this and then one by one we'll cut off these circles, these rounds. Like this. Now, make a cut in one of the corners till the center point. Now, इसे एक दूसरे के पीछे and either paste it using glue or as I'm doing, simply staple it. So that it looks like a dia. And then start sticking them using glue or stapling them sideways like this. So once you made these diyas, you can decorate them by using acrylic paint or glitter. Paint the diyas fully both from inside as well as outside. Once you have painted all the diyas, let them dry and then in the end Take mirchi lights, insert the bunch of lights from the bottom and then make every single mirchi light go through these holes so that they come out from here. You have a decorative table lamp which looks like this. See, I inserted the bunch of mirchi lights niche se, and then each and every single light is coming through these holes and I used white paint to further decorate it. You can either hang it or simply place it on your table and now let's light it. Here we go. Your decorative table lamp. Alright, we've run out of time on the show but if you have any feedback or suggestions for us, write to us on the email IDs flashing on your screens. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. Feel free to tweet to us or post your query on our Facebook page. Also, check out our website www.menow.in. The IDs are on your screens and we would love to hear from you. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of News on Magic Pricks Now. Thank you for watching.